Most of you have seen the building, the Co-America Bank building off the 405 freeway over here in the South Coast Metro. This is known as the financial capital of Orange County. But there are some hidden gems and there are a lot of sculptures around here. But we found what we think is the largest sculpture in Costa Mesa and Orange County. And we're going to talk about that now. So sit back and relax as you and I go discovering Costa Mesa. Right, that largest sculpture that we talked about in the opening is the California Scenario Garden over here, better known as the Noguchi Garden. And fortunately for us, we have someone who worked with Osama Noguchi back when all this was happening, and it's Bonnie Richlack. Hi, Bonnie. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you came all the way from New York out here, okay. probably not just to be with us, but we took the opportunity because I think you have a wealth of knowledge about this uh, sculpture. Yes, um, I, I was there when it was built. So yeah, I can tell you some inside stories if that's what you'd like to hear. <laughs> yeah. It's like 1.6 acres yes. of property over here, right? Yes, 1.6 acres. And, and what are the materials and things that were used? Well, mostly, as you can see, mostly stone. I mean, it was really indigenous materials to Southern California. I mean, these stones themselves, Noguchi wanted to bring them from the desert here, the Joshua tree. And there's a sand and granite, and it's a mixture of materials. And water is a big element, right? Yes. Well, you can see, but it's very spare. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> as it is in California. I think uh, Noguchi was thinking about all those things. Um, you know, the high desert garden, um, the, the landscape, the dryness, the, there's very little green here, really. Um, and in many ways, it's, I think, not only was he thinking about it in terms of the, ma the materials that are indigenous to California, but, um, you know, he was very interested in the idea of the Italian piazza which is a place where people go, they walk, they talk, they have coffee, they, they mingle. And that was very central to all of Noguchi's gardens, uh, including this one. Okay, well, this is considered, I look at it and it's one big sculpture, mm -hmm. but it's several sculptures within, correct? Yes, yes. It's almost like a, it's something that a child would make. Each thing is interconnected. Uh, and contributes to the overall concept of the garden, but each thing in and of itself is uh, fanciful and uh, can be many different things to many different people. <laughs> for our audience to get a chance to look at it, the best thing for us to do is now start exploring some of the sculptures. I want to head over to what I consider the centerpiece and a tribute to Henry Sagerstrom, who actually commissioned this work with That's right. Osama. That's right. All right, let's Good. head over right. there then, okay? So as promised, this is the centerpiece of this sculpture garden over here. Tell us what we are in front of here right now. Uh, this is a sculpture um, that Isamu named Spirit of the Lima Bean. It was not its original name, but because of Henry and when it was placed here, Noguchi wanted to name it in honor of Henry, so he called it Spirit of the Lima Bean, okay. referring to, of course, the Lima Bean fields that right. the Sagerstrom's farmed for many years. Well, this piece was uh, conceived in Japan on the island of Shikoku, where Isamu had a studio for many years. Noguchi was inspired by many things, but right. at this point in his life, which was the early 80s, he was traveling to South America to look at some of the early, particularly Cusco, Okay. And the walls, the stone right. notchings and all that are so, um, that he, they, he was incredibly interested in that. This he was going to put together. I mean, he's made sculptures like this in other places, some meaning, you know, they, they right. fit together. And then moved them here or? Uh, well, moved in different places. Yeah. But what's interesting about this piece, because of the earthquake issues in California. Okay. right. Each one had to have a rod They're in connected. it, yet yeah, so nothing would shift or fall right. uh, during an earthquake. But it's fascinating how they fit. The carving 
This was done beforehand to make them actually fit like a puzzle inside. I mean, they're interlocking almost. Totally interlocking, yeah, yeah absolutely. Probably cranes to drop these oh, in place yeah. and move them around, and I can just see yeah. the Samo over there going, no, this one goes over here, we move it. <laughs> exactly. Did they number them? Did they, how did they know yeah. which one went where? Yeah, they, they did number, them. yes, absolutely. Okay. The next place I want to go to yes. is I want to go to one of the other elements that is put in here. There's sand, there's granite, there's marble, is water. I want to go over to the water source, and that's always been one of my most favorite, interesting yeah. pieces. Okay, yes, let's, let's do that. Let's head over there now. This has been one of my favorites for years, and every time I come over here, I always try and figure out what this is. The title of it is? It's Water Source. But we really don't know, because it's, it's like you said, a kid. It's your own imagination to me. I'm thinking mountains, I'm thinking the snow, and the water runs off into our rivers, and that's our water source. That's but right. It, it's also bigger than that. You know, formally, this was a, uh, a shape that Noguchi used over and over and over again in many of his gardens, and they were, in, in my estimation, inspired, this shape was inspired by the observatories in Delhi and Jaipur. Uh, which he documented and was incredibly fascinated by. So there's that astronomical element to this too. So <laughs> you could say that, I mean, it is magical. I mean, right. you could, this whole place is magical, but you're right, water source, and again, you know, California, lack of water. These were issues that, you know, were very important to the concept of this garden too. The water runs from the source and now we're traveling into our rivers here. And what is this called? Uh, this has no specific name. The, the, the stream has no specific name. So it's not part of, I was reading there's water use, water but- Water use is over there. Let's follow that and head over there. We are amongst the financial capital of Orange County. And yet there's this serene, area you can go and get away and I think somebody had that in mind yes I, I think so I'm and actually I think it was Henry <laughs> well let's talk let's stop before we head over the right. pyramid right now and let's talk a little bit about Henry and Osamu's yeah. relationship he was sick when Henry came to New York tell us a little bit about that and he wasn't okay. well, really wanting to, to say uh, when Henry was looking for a landscape architect he wasn't really looking for a sculptor he was looking for an art a landscape architect and he saw um, the cover of Smithsonian and Noguchi had done a large garden for the city of Detroit with this very spectacular fountain right really it looked like it it was a satellite that could take off any minute and that is really what attracted uh, Henry to Isamu and then it was it was then he was in pursuit he wanted to meet Noguchi, wanted to talk to him about his ideas doing something here. So he Nigu made arrangements to travel to New York to meet him. That's right. They, they met in New York. Noguchi had an apartment on 69th Street, and Henry uh, made an appointment to see him there, but Noguchi wasn't feeling well, so he turned him away. And then Henry again went to his studio in Long Island City, knocked on his door. Finally, Noguchi let him in and they were able to talk and they established some sort of relationship that was everybody was surprised by because Noguchi did not like working with developers. Right. Every public project he did was either for an organization um, or some sort of an institution, you know, whether it was Yale or UNESCO, you know. So this was his first Commercial venture with a real a developer, right? Right. But if anybody knows our Henry Sagerstrom, he's persuasive, and I think he sold to Samo on the fact that he was serious about the art. Yes, and I also think that perhaps he gave Noguchi a um, an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> I love that. That is great. Well, you know, unlike yeah. you know, civic or or municipal entities who have very strict budgets and right. so forth. I think, you know, Henry was very generous in terms of, you know, what Isamu wanted. Now, Isamu was the most uncompromising person in the world. You either went his way or he walked away. And Henry understood that. So it was, 
they were two very strong, powerful men, creative men, who developed a friendship based on based on admiration right. for each other. I was going to say that Henry sounds a lot like Osamu, and I'm like, some, whoever won that battle, and it seems like Osamu did because Henry really wanted this. Um, one of the things that also Osamu wasn't really happy about is we are surrounded by parking structures. And in New York, people tend to walk a little more than drive, and he didn't like the fact that Californians think about just driving and don't walk anywhere, right? Well, that's a big part of it, yeah. And, and it's not just here. Other projects he's done, he's always, he hates cars, traffic. Yeah. I mean, you can still hear it a little bit over right. there, but he did not want any sight of a parking structure. Yes. So that was also part of his design that if he was going to do this, he had to block out anything having to do with cars. And, and one last little tidbit because of that interview in 2003 where Osama was not feeling well, so he's already kind of grumpy mood, and Henry shows him the plans, and Osama apparently goes, what's that? That's a parking structure. What's that? Well, that's another parking structure. I don't want to do this. And he actually, Henry left, not with any hope, mm -hmm. sent him a letter, and as we talked about earlier, they finally warmed up to each other, and it, this became a reality. Yes, well, Isamu won on that front. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Let's head over now to the pyramid, because right. that's the water use, right? That's water okay. use, Excellent. yes. Now the water comes from water source, trickles down and follows this river of rock and sand and stuff. Tell us a little bit about that. That's also, I think, a, a formal uh, device in this, you yeah. know, the sense that there is water underground, it's moving, and it's moving towards this pyramid or this structure, which is almost like something out of, uh, what was it, 2001 Space Odyssey, right. you know? Yeah. There's something very uh, sci science fiction-like about it. Water's for farmers, and Henry was a big farmer, so that's appropriate for this. And, and it travels to all the industry and everybody, right? Yes, but exactly. And but this I is think now eating it up. That's right. That's exactly it. And I think this big, heavy thing represents that that world around us that's sucking up all that water. And that's what Osama has done. We've taken the water and we, it disappears underneath that's right. our water use pyramid, right? <laughs> that's right. At least it's all recycled right. water. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It just keeps going, yeah. Now, this is made out of granite. It's another right. element that we've mixed so many elements into this. Um, and it's really not centered. It kind of seems off-centered a it little is bit. off-centered. Yeah. yeah, it is. And so imagination and all that? Yes, thing. yes. Well, there's also the, um, let's not forget, you know, Noguchi was half Japanese, and he was very interested in that idea of the this asymmetrical being more interesting than the symmetrical. Yeah. And that it added a little right. uh, tension to situations. And I think that's probably a little bit of that, too. It doesn't go right dead center. It I goes know, right? off. Yeah. Yes. And one of the other things is we're starting to see that I love about this place is you come here at different times of the day, the shadows create almost a whole different vision and look, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, I was here the other night, one of the restaurants that look out on the garden at night. It's just, it's otherworldly, right. completely otherworldly. Yeah. And the scale, that is also because of the shadows, the scale of these things triple. Right. And it becomes a stage set. Yeah. Yeah. in many ways at night. Um, and we have these huge buildings that block the sun in certain ways. I can actually see shadows starting to form on the yeah. tip up there. So it's changing as the light moves. That's it's right. changing our vision. And, and what was it like for you working with Osamu Noguchi during these times? Uh, well, I was young then and mm -hmm. uh, learning a lot. I, I mean, it was a chance of a lifetime to really right. touch history in yeah. that way. Uh, it was, I mean, he was not a, an easy person to work with, certainly. Right. Well, so, uh, but... He's a temperamental know. artist, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. But a exactly. sculpture artist, not a landscape, which is what a lot of people kind of equate with this. As right. Being. Well, he broke, he really broke those barriers. Um, now, sculptors can be landscape architects, and landscape architects can be right. architects. Or, you know, everybody can be everything exactly. now, and it's totally yeah. acceptable. When Noguchi was making work, uh, you know, he made furniture, he made gardens, he made playgrounds, he made uh, theater curtains, and he wasn't really looked on very favorably. It's like, 
right. you either do one thing or you don't, you know. Okay. But he was a renaissance man in that right. way, early on, um, ahead of his time, I think, really well, ahead of his time. I agree. And now that we've covered water, mm -hmm. let's head over because one of the other elements is our desert aspect yes. of the California scenario. That's right. Garden, better known as Noguchi's Garden, really. <laughs> okay. okay, let's head over there. Water to desert, we've made our way over here. Now describe this and tell us a little bit about this part of it. Uh, well, it was, again, in terms of the whole concept, you know, we have the redwoods there, we have the desert here. You know, very simply, Noguchi was pulling all these indigenous elements from the idea of California. Right. The only thing that's missing here is the ocean. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. But the desert is really, uh, you know, a big part of, of, of Southern California. Yeah. Um, Noguchi really did know his plants, and these were very specifically placed. It's a, a mound. He used mounds in many of his gardens right. around the world. To me, it looks like a moonscape almost. almost. I mean, now this goes back to everybody brings their own thoughts and visions. And That's so right. On. It seems barren. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, each thing is so specifically placed there that you can see it. It's not like a big mash of succulents. The video I watched, yes. he actually made them move certain plants because one side started to get overloaded with certain right. types. And exactly. No, he was very, very minimal. What's interesting for me, what is this, how many years later, is to see these things now right. because everything was so small when he planted. And you, if you can try and imagine, here's Henry, he just had this big garden commissioned and it looks so barren. Right. Now, of course, we would never imagine that. Yeah. But Noguchi had, he too had that vision and Henry accepted it, that one day it would fill in as these succulents have. I mean, the size of some of these are just exquisite, but you wouldn't be able to really notice it if it was packed with it. The circle was a big part of uh, the mound. Uh, you can look at any number of them. There's one that he did for a Connecticut general, the a number of gardens that have the concave and convex circle. Right, right. It was something circle, circle of life. You know, the circle is a, is exactly. a, a universal right. symbol. Um, and then it's a contrast in shapes because we have rectangles, we have triangles, we have pyramids, right. we have the circle. And that's the, right. That's the other thing because a lot of the materials, some of them are hard like the granite and then some of them are soft and then we have the water elements, we've got the trees and we do have grass over there. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. very little, but yes. Well, we that's do. true. Yeah, but it has to be around the redwoods. <laughs> right, so. it does indeed. Um, what do you think we should go next? We still have, I think, three more to talk about. Uh, the redwoods or... Land uh, use. Let's talk that's, about That's the one I don't know anything about, so I'm relying on you. We're going to head over to land use. I was trying to figure this one out. Okay, well, this is the one I come into dreading because I don't really know that much about it, although I do know it's land use, but tell me what's going on with... Okay, well, firstly, let me ask you, what do you see in this? I see some foliage, and I see a large granite rectangle sitting on top that has kind of a curved shape. Now, other than that, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> Well, um, I think, firstly, the structure. I mean, it, again, this is my reading of it. It's monumental, right? It's on this, another mound, but it's very monumental. It has the sense of, like, the footing for something. Oh, right. But at the yeah. same time, I hate to say this, it also has a coffin-like shape to it. I was going to mention that, but then I was afraid to. It's, but right. Well, but well, it you does. said monumental. Yes. And that's what mm -hmm. it looks so like it is, That's really right. The that's they right. That's yeah. right. So I think you can't ignore that part of its design. Not that Noguchi specifically intended that, but right. I think the overall sense when you put it in place with everything else here, land use. Right. What do we do with the land? Yeah. You know, what do we do with it? We memorialize it. We we lift it up, we create buildings on top of buildings on top of buildings. Um, so I think it's more uh, open-ended kind of interpretation of this, but okay, it now, is about monument. Now I'm putting some things together because I'm thinking nobody in Costa Mesa used land better than the Sagerstroms. Mm -hmm. They started out 
lima beans, yeah. vegetation, whatever, and then they ended up into leasing office space, the harder granite surfaces, and that's where these buildings, these, right. these green glass buildings that we are surrounded by, um, Henry called them green glass, I thought they were smoked, but I'm gonna go with what Henry said. I mean, this is what's making this like the financial capital, and then you've got this nice serenity mm -hmm that all these office workers, instead of pulling their hair out, can come over here That's right. and enjoy this. Yes, yes. Well, they say it is a kind of Zen experience, you right. know? Very contemplative place. Very, mm -hmm. very contemplative. You don't come here to have a dance party or, you know, it's you come here to be quiet, maybe make a few phone calls. But Although, uh, we did hold a couple of restaurant weeks here, oh, yeah. well, and there have been some other things here. It's a wonderful venue, by the way, to yeah. do that. So. Um, which and I think it's open. Um, I think the Irvine Company has purchased the land recently or a few years back, and I think it still has the 8 a.m. to midnight opening open to the public. Yeah. You can come here. You don't have to have pay a ticket or anything That's to right. come in here. And the signage is great too, by the way. At uh, each entrance, there's something about the garden that's I think really helpful yeah, to the absolutely. common, you know, to the pedestrian who just wanders in here. So as we're all walking over to the forest walk, I just wanted to point out, Brad, these, all the things that Noguchi designed here. It's not just the elements we've spoken about, but what's so extraordinary, if you notice, around the garden there, there the curved benches. He made furniture for many, many years. And it's it's a sort of quintessential modernist furniture. Everybody's into it these days right? but yeah, yeah Noguchi uh, patented these and uh, it's a lot of seating to be able to sit and enjoy his, uh, his other work. I was going to call this like secondary sculptures but it all oh. blends in as part of it though it it's not part really, of it right? well yeah and he's setting up various viewing positions like you can see over there to that fountain right so he, he's controlling the viewing of it too if you want to sit down and gaze we can see a shadow of that and you can see a little bit of the light reflecting that's coming from these glass buildings it's not from the sun itself that's a reflection so this is another visual element there and, and we're looking even at the wall with the trees that's right. i mean that's amazing that looks awesome over there right now yeah it really does Okay, now we are over to the entrance of the Redwood area. It, this is, first thing I notice is it's kind of wider at the bottom, a little bit of a wedge is uh... Yes, well, it's the perspective as you, is it, it was a, you oh, know, a trick, yes, you know, yes. you're going uphill and it gets narrower and narrower right. as you get to the top, which adds to the... So a visual trick here. That's right. Okay, and we're walking on granite. That's right. Uh, I guess stones here. Yes, and uh, this beautiful grass, which I wish I could know, I knew the name of it. I'd plant my own. It's so beautiful. It's like fur or something. Yeah, it's and, it's and so... And it contrasts because we're on the hard stone right. and what you said, like the softer fur, and then the green and yes. the deep green. It's yes. a deep, dark, rich It green. really is. And Looks then, of course, wonderful. you have the redwoods around yeah. us. We are surrounded in the redwoods. I feel like I'm in the mountains or something. This is Sequoia, wonderful. yes. Sequoia, right. <laughs> We've got the desert scene we're looking out from our redwood perch here. and uh, Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, yes. this is really, really, really You get nice. a sense of its scale from yes, up here. Yes, absolutely. These redwood trees during the noon hours aren't going to be much, but during like 10 to you know, 8 to 10 in the morning, these are going to block the morning sun and then the evening right. sun too. Which, well, you can uh, feel how much cooler it is know, up, right? up it here. Is. It's like yeah. we, we, we stepped up into a lot cooler area. One last one to go to, and that is the energy fountain. I kind of saved that to last because you told the story about how it was a fountain he saw in Detroit That's right. that Henry decided, let's not do this grass park. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do a grass park area here to match that, but then decided, you know, that security reasons, you know, having that wouldn't work. So, th and this was a much better alternative, but it was a fountain. Let's go okay, take a look okay. at that fountain over there. All right, there. we'll do that. So now we've made our way over. This is the energy fountain. Is that yes. what it's called here? Yes. And it's really a fountain, right. <laughs> unlike water source. Um, right. This is very active, very, very active. There's a wonderful video of Noguchi refining the way the water runs down. He didn't like it splashing off too much, so once it was already in place, they kept testing it and testing it, and he suggested that they 
honed down many of the stones so that it would flow exactly the way he wanted it. It is awesome. I mean, it does have a great flow down here. And these are granite little kind of tile stones, right? Or did right. we carve Locks. those? They're individual. Yes, they're all individual, yes. And, and to go with your story, yes. a video I was watching, there was a lip on the top of That's this right. cylinder. That's right. And it was and making he, it splash even more like a That's waterfall. right, and he wanted and that. that. That's and right. He, they, he goes, we have to keep sanding and sanding and or grinding it down. That's and right. it even might have made a little bit of a curve there, mm -hmm. so it really flows. I, I yeah. mean, look at how that it comes is. off that metal piece. I know, down it just flows down. It it's, it's, it's beautiful. As we talked about earlier, the, the Smithsonian cover, the, the big fountain that Noguchi made in Detroit that interested Henry so much, this probably was uh, a nod to that in some ways. Well, and strategically placed that when you walk in from the restaurants around here, the hotels around here, the businesses, first thing we're seeing That's is... That's right, the fountain, the yes. Fountain. yes. You saw it from design to come. What was going through your guys' minds when you saw this? Well, the model we saw was so basic. I mean, even Henry, I remember looking at it and thinking, really, this is this is it? <laughs> <laughs> right? um, yeah. I mean, it was bare, spare then, but this model was very, just little glue and wood right, and right, flow, right. Um, little paint, but it was, uh, it was, but it was always like that when you watch Noguchi work. I mean, it was just, it right. seemed like it was, a to Z very quickly, yeah. you know, and you weren't ever quite sure. I mean, unless you worked on the architectural drawings, I'm sure that was um, tedious. But uh, to see these things develop like this, it went so quickly. It went so incredibly quickly. And the story is, this became one of his favorite gardens, even though he refused or didn't, you know, didn't want to do it at first. But he came back almost yearly to check the growth and see how things were going. Right? Yes, yes. Well, I hope more people discover this place. Yes, it's very, very special. And that's what we're about, and we're going to try and make that happen. And if you guys have anything in the future you think you'd like to see on Discovering Costa Mesa, be sure to email us at the address you see below. And until then, remember, we are Discovering Costa Mesa.